All right, I think we're ready to get started. Thanks, everyone, uh, for coming out to our press conference today. Uh, I'm Julia DeGraw, the Northwest Organizer with Food and Water Watch. And uh, we're going to have uh, Jeff uh, Klatke open up the uh, press conference. Uh, he's speaking on behalf of AFSME. He's their treasurer. And uh, then I will speak a little bit more about uh, the actual protest that uh, Food and Water Watch and Bark are filing uh, against a uh, water bottling uh, proposal for Nestle. And then Barbara Willer will speak, uh, who was a former Multnomah County Commissioner uh, after I speak. If you could all save your questions for after we've all spoken, that would be great. Thanks. Hi, good morning. My name is Jeff Clackey, and I am the treasurer of Oregon AFSCME. Welcome to the Portland office of Oregon AFSCME. For those who are not familiar with AFSCME, we are the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees representing 25,000 public service workers delivering vital services ranging from public safety and corrections to early childhood and special needs education, from environmental protection to care for disabled adults in both the public sector and private sector. As public servants, we understand the importance of protecting what belongs to all of us, including our shared resources like our state's water supply. I co-authored a resolution that was presented to and approved by the Oregon AFSCME Executive Board in July of 2011, which opposed Nestle's attempt to purchase and control the municipal water supply of Cascade Locks. The resolution was approved to be forwarded to the Oregon AFL-CIO Convention in September of 2011. This resolution refers to a prior resolution passed at the 2009 Oregon AFL-CIO Convention that resolved to, quote, discourage any attempts at water privatization throughout Oregon. It also refers to ORS 537.110 titled Public Ownership of Waters, which declares that all water within the state from all sources of water supply belongs to the public. AFSCME has two main concerns about Nestle's proposal. Our first main concern is the privatization and commoditization of a public municipal water source. We believe this is illegal. We also believe it is immoral and short-sighted. Our second main concern is about Nestle as an employer, as well as their portrayal of themselves as being a job creator for the local community. In a study, study published in 1993, Nestle's previous project proposals to the communities in which it sought to build bottling plants are compared with actual results, which reveal that, at an average, only 24 permanent jobs were created per plant, and of those, only between 10 and 40 percent of local residents actually filled those jobs. Most jobs are typically filled by existing Nestle employees who are transferred. The net job creation for the residents of Cascade Locks extrapolating from Nestle's history would only be between two and ten permanent jobs. Furthermore, these jobs have not been at wages that could be considered competitive. Nestle has historically opposed their United States employees' right to form a union and bargain collectively for better compensation. I have learned recently that Nestle is close to entering into a project labor agreement with the Building Trades Council, which would ensure union jobs during the construction phase. I'm speaking for myself, not at an AFSCME position for this statement here. I personally feel that this was little more than a savvy move by Nestle to divide the labor community over this project and pit union against union. AFSCME continues to oppose the privatization and commoditization of a public water resource and continues to oppose a historically bad employer who has routinely overpromised and underdelivered family wage jobs in the communities in which it builds water bottling plants. For these reasons, AFSCME chose to join the Keep Nestle Out of the Gorge campaign. So today, um, as uh, the organizer for the Northwest Organizer for Food and Water Watch, I'm going to talk a little bit more about. Um, uh, about what the coalition is working on right now, the next major step in the campaign, and some recent developments. Um, as I mentioned, I'm with Food and Water Watch. We're a consumer advo advocacy group working to ensure the food, water, and fish we consume is safe, accessible, and sustainable. In essence, we're protecting our most essential resources uh, for all people. 
So uh, Food and Water Watch and BARC have, have chosen to appeal two water resources decisions uh, on behalf of the entire coalition Food and Water Up to keep Nestle out of the gorge. The Keep Nestle Out of the Gorge Coalition includes conservation, environmental, religious, and public health and consumer advocacy groups that have been fighting for over two years to protect Oregon's water in the Columbia Gorge from a Nestle water bottling plant. Today, today Food and Water Watch and BARC, members of the Keep Nestle Out of the Gorge Coalition, are filing an appeal to permit uh, that the Oregon Water Resources Department decided to approve. In order to understand this appeal, a bit of background is needed. Nestle intends to bottle spring water in the Columbia River Gorge town of Cascade Locks under its Arrowhead brand. It will also bottle the town's municipal water under its Pure Life brand. The spring water Nestle intends to bottle is used by the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife for a fish hatchery, and the state agency cannot simply sell or give away this water, at least without some state permits. Uh, in order for Nestle to bottle that water, three permits are required to be approved by the Water Resources Department. The final of these three permits is an actual water exchange permit that would lead to the state agency giving away public water resources that are owned by each Oregonian so that Nestle can bottle it. That controversial water exchange cannot be processed and approved until two related permits have been fully processed. We are fighting those two related permits with the ultimate goal of making sure that the water that ODFW is using for its fish hatchery cannot be used by Nestle. Uh, and we are also very grateful to Craig Law Center for taking on our case and rising to the challenge of protecting Oregon's water for Oregonians. However, in this case, the ultimate solution to keeping Nessie out of the gorge lies with Governor Kitzhopper. To date, over 10,000 Oregonians have let the governor know that they want him to stop Nestle from bottling their water. We are calling on the governor to ask Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife to pull out of the water exchange that would allow Nestle to bottle and profit off of Oregon's public water resources. Our state legislators have been hearing from their constituents on this issue as well. Senator Jackie Dingfelder has expressed concerns about the break in the public trust that Nestle's water bottling proposal would bring to the state and is concerned about the environmental damages it could cause. She is part of a growing concern coming from our state legislature. The longer the governor waits to take action, the more government resources that will be used in defending permits and processing permits that will ultimately lead to a Nestle water bottling facility. The coalition and thousands of Oregonians are calling on him to do the right thing now and to say no to Nestle. Good morning. I'm Barbara Willer. In 2010, I had the privilege of being an interim Multnomah County Commissioner. Uh, during that time period was when I learned about uh, the possibility of Nestle moving into the gorge with a bottling plant and I decided to meet with officials of Cascade Locks and we had a great meeting. I understood why they wanted to have a bottling plant. They were concerned about jobs. We all know that throughout Oregon um, we're suffering from a recession. People need jobs but I in the end agreed to disagree with them that this was not the answer for jobs in Oregon that extracting our resources for, as Jeff said, very few jobs even. My concern is that we're facing a planetary crisis on many fronts with our environment, but none hits home so personally as water. We cannot live without fresh water. It's a shared legacy, public trust, and a collective responsibility that we ensure water is available to all people. Selling public water to private companies who then bottle it and resell it back to us is wrong and bad public policy. To allow, to allow Nestle or any other company to take water from one of the gorgeous watersheds where fish are currently using it and trucking it through the already sometimes smoggy gorge is not only unnecessary for our needs, but a violation of the belief that water is a human right. Bottled water is bad for the environment. It takes up to 2,000 times more energy to produce a gallon of bottled water than a gallon of tap water. Manufacturing America's Water bottles consume 17.6 million barrels of oil each year. About three gallons of water are used to produce one gallon of bottled water. And not only is it using up valuable resources to produce bottled water, but only 25% of the plastic that bottled water sits in is generally recycled. The rest end up, end up in landfills and oceans, causing harm to the ecosystem and wildlife. So not only are we selling a public resource water, we are causing more damage to our ecosystem and unnecessarily using other resources to create the bottled water. 
Bottled water creates health and safety issues. Chemical additives in plastic bottles often leach into bottled water. These additives have been linked to obesity, breast cancer, and early puberty. Bottled water is a waste of money. Bull, one, Bull Run provides us with pristine water. When you calculate the cost for a gallon of bottled water, it can cost more than we pay for a gallon of gas. Tap water costs less than one cent a gallon. Also, Oregon taxpayers would be footing the bill for road costs for the 200 trucks a day that will occur after the Nestle plant is built. Is this a good use of tax dollars to bottle our collective resource, water, resell it to us, and in the process, increase costs to our transportation system and ultimately to us? I don't think so. In 2010, Multnomah County government banned the use of tax dollars for purchasing bottled water except in emergencies. This saved approximately 20000 a year that could be used for more important services. In 2010, I worked with Food and Water Watch to help Multnomah County government ad adopt a Take Back the Tap program to encourage Multnomah County employees and Multnomah County citizens to not buy bottled water. The City of Vancouver and Clark County have also adopted similar me measures. By bottling Oregon's water, the state is breaching the public trust do doctrine. This would be the first time that a state agency relinquishes its control of water in order for it to be sold to Nestle for a profit. It is a breach of the public's trust to give our public drinking water away because it is basically a privatization of a public natural resource, one that humans and other species need to survive. It sets a horrible precedent that our resources are up for sale. It's important that the people of Oregon understand what is at stake here. We need to stand firmly and say no to allowing Nestle or any other private company to bottle our public water. It is un environmentally unsound and contrary to the direction we need to be moving as our environmental crisis deepens. The evidence is unmistakable. We are facing unprecedented environmental and human challenges due to climate change. Our local and state governments are working with its partners in our community to plan and respond to what's ahead. Selling public water resources is contrary to all the other work we are doing to repair our communities for these climate changes.